The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growth. Welcome to RealAgriculture.com. We're here with Dr. Clarence Swanton. He's a weeds researcher at the University of Guelph. He's actually a, one of my mentors, if you will. He taught me here at the University of Guelph. He's almost a cool guy, but what's really cool is he's got some excellent new research. It's a wonderful thing about science is everybody challenges science because the answer always changes. It's exactly what we want. The answer changes based on new information. So Clarence, you have some new information around the critical weed free period. We always used to say that three leaf to eight leaf stage of corn, we needed the weeds gone from first to third trifoliate and soybeans. So if we let weeds be there in the early going of the crops, that was an okay thing. But suddenly that's not the case. Can you tell us about that? Well, uh, Peter, yeah, the, um, the issue they have, the critical period is still highly relevant. Okay, it still is a guideline for us. But one of the questions we started to ask was uh, if we looked at our graphs and we realized that once we got into that critical period, we could lose yield, you know, if we waited a little bit too long past that threshold of three leaf, for example, things were happening very fast in the plant. So we started to look at what was happening very early at the seedling stage uh, when the weeds were present, okay? And what we find is that a lot of stuff is happening in the cell level. So the plants are beginning to communicate, uh, which is a neat thing to think about. You need to think about a corn plant or a soybean plant being like a computer, a computer chipboard that is constantly reading its environment. For example, we've just uh, about to release some work where we show that as a soybean plant is coming up through the ground, as it gets near the surface of the ground, it begins to know whether there's green tissue on the top of that surface. And it picks up the signal through the pores of the soil and actually changes its morphology before it even emerges out of the ground. When it's in the hypocotyl stage of the soybean plant, wow. it's already changed because of the presence of above ground weeds. So it's the speed at which some of these things are changing. This is some of the, the new things that we're finding that, that the plants are actually communicating, they're reading their environment, and they're actually changing their physiology and their morphology. So what this new research says then is that we have to have everything clean when that plant is emerging or almost in the soybean case, before it emerges, those weeds essentially need to be dead. Right. So our, our original critical period was based around when we could detect yield differences. Now we're looking at the cell level of the plant and we're able to see some of these changes happening very early on. Now the question is, even though those plants are, this is happening early, can the plant compensate for it, okay? So that's one of the concerns, you know, issues that we have. The plant has to repair some of those damages. So right now our data says that very early on, prior to even the beginning of that critical period, we're starting to detect physiological changes. And so that argues well for the fact of, you know, start clean and stay clean and provides the science behind that recommendation. So what we'd really like to do then is get into back into more soil applied herbicides, make sure that we had the weeds dead at that point, and then, so now I want to plant a cover crop after. If, if the corn gets big enough, the soybeans get big enough, do late emerging weeds still play or does the end of that critical weed free period still come into play where I can plant those cover crops? Yeah, I think in terms of planting cover crops, you want to use the critical period concept. And that's, that I would use that as my guideline. And we certainly know the, in, in the work that, that we have done, the most consistent part of the critical period was the ending of the critical period. The rest of it's like an accordion because it, depending on the field, on the environment, on the weed pressure, things can begin a little bit earlier. Mind you, we, we were very conservative on our estimates, but it is, you know, the, it is just a guideline. But I think in terms of cover crops, there's some real potential to use that critical period as your guideline for planting. When a plant comes up out of the ground, it needs to, should only see its own siblings, okay? It should only see corn, should only see corn plants. We know that if the weed emerges at the same time as the corn plant, the plant detects that and it starts to, to uh, uh, change its physiology in response. So start clean, stay clean is a very good beginning and use that end of the critical period so that that's the time frame I really still need to focus on good weed management.
Yeah, so start clean means that before the crop comes up, we have everything dead, stay clean till the end of that critical weed free period, which is still probably in that six to eight leaf yeah. stage of corn, yeah. that two to three leaf uh, trifoliate stage of yep. soybeans, so cool. So last question then, in terms of glyphosate, I'm out there, I spray my glyphosate. We know that glyphosate is a very slow kill. Once I spray the glyphosate, the weed's dead, I'm good, or how does that play out? Well, that's an interesting point because, you know, when, you, when you've when you made the effort to spray your field and you're leaving the field, you're feeling like the weed control work is all done, right? And what our work is suggesting is that uh, we know that if uh, the weeds are present, the plants are able to detect those weeds, and we know that the longer the weed stays green, the plants continue to get that signal from the weed. And with glyphosate, Glyphosate takes 10 days to brown out a weed. And so even though you've sprayed today, the impact of that weed is still being felt uh, through signaling on the actual crop plant itself. So the longer it takes to die, the, the more impact it still has on the crop seedling. Wow, so really amazing stuff. I think it's incredible that the plant can sense that and that you've been able to sort that out. That's unbelievable really that you could get that level of of sensitivity and really cool stuff that we've changed that whole mindset. I mean, I think we've always been leaders in terms of good weed control, that critical weed free period. But at bottom line for the producer is make sure that you start clean and once you get past that critical weed free period, you don't have to worry about weed control, but that early start, having the weeds gone and not having those physiological changes and having maximum yield is really quite critical. Thanks very much, Clarence. We'll be back on Cover Crop. Thank you.